Jimi Hendrix taught me how to do that. Hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. What you heard me play at the beginning of this video was Boil Them Cabbage Down, but if you didn't recognize it, no worries. It's probably because I played it completely different than I've ever played it before. I played it with bounce. What is bounce? Well, let me tell you, I had no idea what bounce was. But my path to learning what bounce is started with a comment from one of you guys. I believe it was Steve that in one of my videos, gosh, like three months ago, four months ago, said that my playing, uh, at least one of my songs, sounded like it was getting a little bit of bounce. And I believe I even commented on that, uh, on his comment, because I didn't know what the heck that meant. It soon went out of my mind. I didn't think about it anymore, not knowing what bounce was and kept going on. Now here we are three months later and I'm kind of obsessed with it because I had an epiphany about bounce and what it means and how to do it just recently. And it's been kind of timely too, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I'll get to that in a little bit. So let's back up a little bit again. We're back at the comment three months ago from Steve about how my song or my playing has a little bit of bounce and then nothing really came up of it. But that seed was planted in my head. Then fast forward another two or three months and I'm re-watching Whiplash, a really good movie if you haven't seen it. J.K. Ro uh, Simmons, I almost said Rowling. J.K. Simmons' performance as the antagonist, the, the teacher, is, is just mind-blowing. And there's a scene in it where he is, um, Oh, I don't know the actor. Goose's son from uh, Top Gun Maverick. Anyway, he hurls a chair at his head because he's off time. Are you rusher or are you a dragger or are you on my effing time? It's a great scene. If I can find it, I'll link it below to watch. It's a really cool scene. Anyway, that would be the second nugget that kind of lodged in my head in the path to where I am today. Fast forward up until just last week and I came across a video from uh, another YouTuber, uh, his name is Paul Davis, he's a guitarist, and, and um, he was doing a video on a song by Jimi Hendrix, uh, I can't remember the name of the song off the top of my head, but I'm gonna link that video below, and in it he was discussing how impossible it was to play this song by Jimi Hendrix, and he had a guest on it who plays renditions of Jimi Hendrix's song, and was discussing why it's so hard to play this song and it had to do with timing and how Jimi Hendrix would push or drag timing to suit his mood that day. Sometimes it was never the same on even a, the same song. We just play it differently all the time and it add a whole bunch of character and flavor to the song. Um, this, this YouTuber, Paul David, he's got like... <laughs> like three and a half million subscribers. And I think this particular video had like almost 800,000 views or something like that. Anyway, um, I, I think, I personally think it's because his beard is so good. Like, look at this video. Look at this guy. He's got a great beard. He has this cool accent. That's probably where he's got so many views. It's not, it has nothing to do with content or editing. Here at 2000 Hours of Banjo, we do not edit. We embrace our mistakes because that's what we are, or a bunch of mistakes <laughs> getting through, stumbling through videos. But anyway, I digress. It's a really good video, and I suggest you see it. I'll, again, link that below. But it was really about Jimi Hendrix and his song and how he plays with timing to get different effects to make interest in the song. And for some reason, after watching that video, the comment from Steve, that scene from Whiplash, and now this video about Jimi Hendrix's timing on one of his songs, it all came together, and, for some, and I just had this epiphany. It's like, is that, is that the banjo bounce? And I immediately ran in here, grabbed my banjo, and imagined a kid skipping down the sidewalk instead of walking down the sidewalk. And what came out was Now if I play Boil Them Cabbage Down, this is just the backup for Boil Them Cabbage Down. If I play that with, with what they call straight timing, so equal 
amount of time between notes or quarter notes or eighth notes or what have you. It's totally different. I completely different feel for this song. Just amazing. It, it's the same song, it's the same tablature, but with different kind of timing or spacing between the notes. Um, now, I then rushed back to YouTube and I came across another YouTube video by Eddie Collins. He's a banjo player and he covers the banjo bounce. I don't know how I didn't find this video before, but there it was, the banjo bounce in Eddie Collins' video and he describes the banjo bounce as a way to play a role with a little bit of bounce to it. And that's where you get the banjo bounce from it. So I was, I was pretty happy to get this affirmation that yes, indeed, I have found the banjo bounce. And when, I'm, when I said earlier, I think I said it earlier, that this is very timely, is because I've been working on Wayfaring Stranger. And the interesting thing with Wayfaring Stranger, and this is going to be Mike Heading's arrangement of Wayfaring Stranger, I've been trying to learn the song. In fact, I've got most of the tablature, which is right here. As you can see, I've got marked up with a lot of my notes. I've got the tablature memorized at this point, and I've been playing the song. Let me see if I can get some of it out. I'm kind of screwing it up there, but anyway, that, that is how I've been playing it with straight timing, equal spacing between the notes. And it sounded nothing like how Mike Heading plays it. The way he plays it, it sounds so much better. And I was struggling to figure out what, what's the difference. And it turns out, call it bounce, he called it swing. And I've heard it called other things like shuffle. Obviously, uh, in the Paul Davis video, he, calls, he, he lists a bunch of them, and so does Eddie Collins. They say swing, shuffle, and bounce. Um, I think swing was for jazz, shuffles for blues, and then bounce was for bluegrass, is the way he put it. Uh, that was Eddie Collins. But then there's dragging and pulling, and then rushing and dragging from, from the, the movie Whiplash. So how I was playing it sounded nothing like how Mike Heading plays it. And I've been using headphones. I've actually been using my banjo mute. I, I tend to play with the banjo mute in order to help me kind of muffle my playing and exaggerate the, the music that I'm hearing if I'm trying to emulate that so that my banjo doesn't drown out that sound so I can follow them rather than losing it. Uh, and then I've been using the headphones for, to the same effect. These are actually sound canceling headphones, so I don't even really hear me. I just hear the song and try to play with it. And it actually works. If you're having trouble um, getting the timing down on a song and you've got a recording of it, try using headphones or using your mute to muffle basically your voice so you can hear the voice of the song from the recording. Anyway, so again, the way that I was playing it was straight time.
with straight timing, but that, again, this is not how Mike Heading plays it. He plays it with swing, and it sounds more like this. different and so so much better so I'm still working through that obviously that is not the full song I pause at actually at the point where it all falls apart for me so I'm still I'm about halfway through the song that I can play fairly consistently smoothly when I play it slow and then it falls apart that it falls apart right at the um, at the uh, neck walk Oh boy, I told you this is tough for me. So some parts of the second half I can do pretty well and other parts I'm definitely struggling with as you can tell. But I'm loving the song and I'm loving that I'm getting this banjo bounce. I think it makes a huge, huge difference. I'm glad this is a concept that is now I, I'm aware of and I, I'm kind of getting the mechanics of and I'm sure there's lots of variation of the banjo bounce that you can apply. But I'm getting this down and it feels, feel, it feels really good. Um, but now that I've got your attention, I'm here. I might as well work on um, or show you where I'm at with uh, Foggy Mountain Breakdown. But getting there, picking up a little speed, probably playing a little bit faster than I should, as I always do with the camera rolling. I want to try to impress you guys for some damn reason. Anyway, so that's coming along pretty good. Super stoked with my, I don't know, my understanding of how Wayfaring Stranger is to be played. Very, very excited. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, we are at 497 hours, right? We are really close to 500. You're probably asking yourself, uh, Mark, why didn't you just wait until you hit 500 and cut a video? It's because I'm a working stiff. I gotta make videos whenever I can. So I'm making a video now. And right now I've got 497 hours. The next video I make, we will be breaking that 500 hours. And I feel like I need to do something special because that marks a quarter way towards our goal. Uh, so I might, uh, I'll do just a, a, the next video as this video is, and then I might try to do a compilation of my performances, kind of like a recital as best as I can for the songs that I know. Anyway, things to look forward to. Thank you everybody for watching and staying tuned. I'll see you next time. I've got some practice to do and getting that banjo bounce down. I will see you. Bye.